looking down on us, Lord. Coming up now on the Blessings on. Connection. So here we are. We're with the storm. That was the storm of all storms for the disciples. And I believe that that storm is recorded in all three books because God has a word for us. Anybody in here ever gone through a storm? I'm not talking about the kind of storm when it's raining outside. I'm talking about the kind of storm when your boat is getting so full with water that you don't know what you're going to do. There's a purpose in life while we're living. We share a common goal to make it to heaven. Shining our lights so others might see. We've got a purpose in life. We're working hard to be with you, Jesus. We're working hard to be with you. For a few minutes. I want to encourage you to get ready. I, I want to encourage you to get prepared. Because you see, we are in hurricane season. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Don't miss it. You and I are in hurricane season. Season. Look at your neighbor. Say to your neighbor, you need to be prepared. It's hurricane season. You, you, you need to be prepared. You, you might think all is well, but, but it's hurricane season. And any time now, a storm can arise. And if that storm arises, it can fill your boat and sink your boat. Say it again for me. As you take your seat, you need to be prepared. It's hurricane season. In this particular area in which you and I live in, from June 1st, to November 30th has been labeled as hurricane season. But listen now, if you're a child of God, you know hurricane season is all year long, all life long. But we are sitting smack down in the middle of hurricane season. When we start to talk about hurricanes, perhaps the most devastating hurricane that you and I can recall is Hurricane Rita. Anybody here remember Hurricane Rita? When Hurricane Rita came marching in September 18, 2005, it was so devastating. It knocked the lights out. It knocked power out everywhere. People could not find a place to get gas. People could not find a place to get food. It was a place uh, in time that many of us will not forget. I remember that at this particular congregation, the lights were out for two Sundays in a row. And so when you are talking to Houstonians and you talk about the storm of all storms, many of us will go back and say Hurricane Rita. But if you're talking to someone from Louisiana, you're talking to someone from New Orleans, and you ask them, what's the storm of all storms? More than likely, they will tell you that it's Hurricane Katrina. 1,800 plus lives lost. People on top of the Superdome, people sleeping in the Superdome. It was a horrific time as the waters rose in Louisiana. 
many people from Louisiana will tell you that was the storm, and I'll never forget that storm. If you ask me today, preacher man, what's your storm of all storms? What hurricane registers most in your mind? It was in September of 1961. Hurricane Carla. Hurricane Carla came with winds of 175 miles an hour. Lives were lost. Billions of dollars spent because Hurricane Carla decided it was coming to town. I won't forget that time. My parents lived on a dead end street. And on the far side of the house, there was a huge bio. So when you think of bios and you think of the ability to carry water away, there is the tendency to say, it's all right. In front of our house were ditches that were five feet deep. And so that was the sense that, yes, it's a hurricane, but it'll be all right. I remember as a little boy, my daddy putting on his rubber boots, walking down the driveway, walking through the gate, walking to look at how bad the bio was, how bad the ditches were. When water started to overflow from the bayou, when water started to overflow from the ditches, when water started to overflow in the yard, I saw my daddy start to shake his head. You see, if you ever been in a storm and you saw the water coming, you, you got nervous because you knew you had to do something. And I saw my daddy pack up his family and move to higher ground packed up his family, and we went to stay at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ during the storm because it was higher ground. You didn't hear me. I said it was higher ground. Daddy, where are you taking your family? I'm taking my family to the church house. It's higher ground. It's a storm going on, but I know if I get to the church house, everything will be all right. It was the storm of all storms. I will always remember that storm. But here in the text is the storm of all storms for the disciples. You got to see it. They're out on the Sea of Galilee. The sea of Galilee is 12 miles across and 8 miles wide. On one side. The Sea of Galilee is the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights soar into the sky, some reaching 2,200 feet. The Sea of Galilee is 680 feet below sea level. In some days, that wind starts to whistle starts to come down from the Golden Heights and starts to move through the Sea of Galilee. I've been there one time when the tour guide says, it's too bad for us to go out today. So here we are. We're with the storm that was the storm of all storms for the disciples. And I believe that that storm is recorded in all three books because God has a word for us. Anybody in here ever gone through a storm? I'm not talking about the kind of storm when it's raining outside. I'm talking about the kind of storm when your boat is getting so full with water that you don't know what you're going to do. God had storm. Ordered. So you and I could have some takeaways. So I don't want you to miss it today. I want to give you five things that are important to realize in the middle of your storm. And someone has said that we're either right now in the middle of a storm or right now we 
or on our way out of a storm, or right now we're on our way in a storm. And so somebody needs to write these five things down. Somebody needs to get ready because I can tell you that as long as you're here on planet Earth, storms are going to come. Don't, don't, don't miss this. I believe that the first thing that is important to record is that it's important to realize that we are on the sea of life and we are headed to the other side. D don't, don't, don't miss that. You and I, right now, though it seems like we're on dry land, though it seems like everything is all right, the truth of the matter is we're on the sea of life. In this particular passage, verse number 35, the Bible says on that same day, when evening had come, he said to them, what are you saying, Jesus? Let us go over to the other side of the lake. I believe this morning that if you listen carefully, you'll hear Jesus today. Say, let's us, let's us, you and I, let's go over together. You don't, you don't need to go by yourself. The waters can become turbulent any moment. Let's go together. I want somebody to recognize today that, that we are on the sea of life. It, it might seem like right now that our boats are docked in harbor. It, it might seem like right now we're on dry land. But I want to remind you today that we're on the sea of life. That this place that you and I are in right now is not our home. It's just a temporary home. We're sailing to the other side. When you realize that you're sailing to the other side, you realize that when you look out of your little portholes, life can change at a moment's notice. When you realize that you're on the sea of life, you realize I need to keep my life jacket close at all times. What are you trying to say, preacher? I want to suggest to you, I want to suggest to you, this world is not our home. You and I are living in a fallen world. And this fallen world is constantly changing. And I don't believe that it's changing for the better. I believe that there are things that are happening all around us that signal us you need to get ready. Drought. Famines, disease, sickness, environmental change, weather change, war, all of these things signal that we are in a dynamic and not stagnatic place. It's moving, it's changing. Coming up now on the Blessings Connection. If Jesus is on board, it really doesn't matter how much rain comes down. Somebody say, if Jesus. If Jesus is on board, it doesn't matter how much lightning is flashing. Somebody shout, if Jesus. If Jesus is on board, it does not matter how much our boats are rocking. Because Jesus is the captain of our ships. That's why it was so important for them to take Jesus. That's why it's so important for us to take Jesus. We need Jesus in our boats. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to try. Hey, I just want to take a moment. I, I know you're right in the middle of the program, and I appreciate it. And that's why I jumped in. I want to say thank you. 
Week after week after week, you open your homes, you open your heart, and you hear the message. It's my prayer that we're blessing you. And, and I know many times people reach out to us and they're looking for a way to bless us because we've blessed them. And so we're created an avenue that you can bless us as we bless you. At the bottom of the screen is the post office box. And so if you'd like to partner with us as we share the word around this city, around this state, around the world, please feel free to. We appreciate the opportunity to bless you. God bless. You can see what goes on. You and I need a place where we can go to and it can be peaceful and it can be happy. And so when Jesus said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my father's house. Or what church? It's many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, but I am on my way there. And the reason I'm going is because I'm going to have a place for you. Oh, church, that's shouting stuff. Where are you going, Jesus? Where are you going, carpenter from Nazareth? I'm going to my father's house. And you don't understand, my father's house is located in a city where the streets are made of gold. My father's house is located in a city where it never rains, where there is no death. And in that city, in my father's house. Somebody shout, in my father's house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a room for you. It's going to be a room where there'll be no more trouble. There'll be no more wars. You see, you see, I, I'm, I'm reminding us today, don't get comfortable. We're on the sea of life. Do all you can to make this place nice, but this place is temporary. It's constantly changing. And so I love Jesus says, let us, let us, let you and I together travel the sea of life, and go over to the other side. The, the other thing that, that I believe that is important to realize is that as we're on the sea of life, don't go by yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, don't go by yourself. It's important that we need to take him with us. Look at verse number 36. Verse number 36 says, and leaving the throne, they took him with them. Just as he was in the boat in which he was sitting and other boats were with him. It is important to realize, yes, we're on the sea of life. But as we're on the sea of life, you need a companion that will stick closer than a brother. You, 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 you got to get into the disciples' head just for a second and, and look at them. Exam I, I, I'm suggesting to you that these were skillful fishermen. Some of them are the sons of Zebedee, and Zebedee had a fishing business. And so this is at least two generations of fishermen that have fished out on the Sea of Galilee. So they know the art of fishing. They know the Sea of Galilee. They understand boats. But they still knew they needed to take him. I, I need somebody to hear me today. Too many times, we rely on all of our experiences. Too, too, too many times, we rely on our friends. Too many times, we rely on our parents. Too many times, we rely on our savings. Too many times, we rely on our intelligence instead of relying on him. In a moment's notice... 
things could change. You see, what I'm suggesting is never realize, never, never rely on your expertise, your ability, your savvy, your know-it-all. I'm telling you, problems can arise just like that. But if Jesus, somebody say, if Jesus, if Jesus is on board our ships, somebody say, if Jesus Somebody say it again. If Jesus, if Jesus is on board our ship, it really doesn't matter how dark it gets. Somebody say if Jesus, if Jesus is on board, it really doesn't matter how much rain comes down. Somebody say if Jesus, if Jesus is on board, it doesn't matter how much lightning is flashing. Somebody shout if Jesus, if Jesus is on board, it does not matter how much our boats are rocking because Jesus is the captain of our ships. That's why it was so important for them to take Jesus. That's why it's so important for us to take Jesus. We need Jesus in our boats. Third thing to realize is realize this, that storms can come at a moment's notice. Everything could be all right as you're sitting here today. Everything could be all right as of last week. Everything could be all right as of last year. But in a moment without warning, without notification, the wind can start to blow. The rain could start to come down and your little boat could start rocking. Storms don't send out a notification. I think I'm coming anytime next week. Storms just happen. And some of you that's been in a storm, you ought to help me. You ought to say amen. amen. Knock you off your feet. You'll be sitting there trying to say, Lord, where did that come from? I was all right. And so here it is, the disciples, it's been a long day. They have been serving, and all of a sudden, it's evening, and then they go out. And when they go out, in verse number 37, the Bible says, and a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportion arose and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was becoming filled. Just like that. Just like that. I'm fine. I'm healthy. Just like that. The doctor shakes his head. My finances are solid. Just like that. I get called into the office and given a pink slip. Can, can, I, can, I, can I suggest to you that the time to get ready for the storm is before the storm occurs? See, you, you can sit here today and you can say, you know what, everything's all right. Well, if everything is all right, get ready because the storm is coming. Nine months ago, no Bible. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to try. Would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's the question that you and I need to answer. That's the question that rings in my ears today. What would it profit me? What would it profit you if we got all of the things we wanted? We, we got the right job. We got the right income. We got the right house. We got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about. It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done, 
Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works, it's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sin. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say it's no longer I who lives in me. It's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. You can see what goes on. You know the path we have to Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m. Evening worship, 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT.